All right, what's going on, guys? This is uh, Derek Matthewson, a.k.a. Lakers Sparrow, and you guys are in the Lakers Sparrow Shrine. So, welcome. <laughs> this is uh, the Sparrow Shrine. So, wow. this has been probably about 25 years, give or take, in the making. Always adding pieces here and there when I can. It just kind of depends on whether or not I can get it for the right price. I mean, obviously, everything does come with a price, but at the same time, it's like... If it's a holy grail piece that I'm looking to add to the collection that I need it, then it'll depend like how much I'm willing to cough up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wasn't until about maybe 2000, give or take, is when I first started collecting some of my like simple pieces like cars I collected a few pennants um, went to a autograph signing in 2001 which was my very first autograph signing I ever went to with Robert Ori and Camarillo and took off from there but it's always been kind of a father-son project on pieces we were putting together um, but not just that it was like you know there was a difference between memorabilia and paraphernalia and I was like you know we wanted to have put together a collection of stuff that wasn't as easy to find and not only that, like actually meeting the players in person and getting it autographed, signed ourselves. So this one right here being the first. So this is Kobe Bryant's signed 81 point game ticket. Wow. wow. So that's the, the game ticket where he's obviously scored 81 points that game. Um, I got that signed at the practice facility as well but I would love to send this in to get authenticated because that will probably only double the value. Wow. Uh, with it not being authenticated, it still has a great value price to it, uh -huh. but one of the, the prize gems in the collection. Um, another great piece that I have here is the original form floor piece that's signed by the original seven Laker Hall of Famers. Wow. So you got Kareem, Worthy, Magic, Wilt, Baylor, Goodrich, and Jerry West, authenticated by all the players. It might not have... Uh, I think I got Worthy's autograph for free, so I don't think that one's authenticated. Mm. For the most part, that's a really cool piece, um, as well as this one here. Um, authenticated by both players, but this is a limited print, a starting lineup that's signed by both Magic and Larry Bird. Sam Perkins game war 1991 NBA Finals jersey. So this was the jersey that Sam Perkins wore when they played the Chicago Bulls in the finals. So this jersey is autographed, it's a bit faded, but what I love about it, and this is another piece of the story, I got this from a guy that was selling this and had it posted on Craigslist. This is many years ago, like um, some years ago. The guy, uh, we met up with him in some random dark parking lot of a mall somewhere in LA. He's just like, all right, meet me at you know, this location at this time. So go down there and I roll up. He comes up rolling up next to me and he's just like, are you here for the jersey? I'm like, yeah. Do you have the money? I'm like, yeah. So I park the car. So we park and then he, he gets out of his vehicle and then he has like the jersey in the bag. He's like, all right, hundred bucks. I'm like, okay, you know, so I'm like, this is the jersey? He's like, yeah. So he hands me the bag, I open it up, I'm looking at the jersey, I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. I'm like, what's the story behind it? Or where'd you get it at least? He's like, well, you know, and as, as creepy as it all kind of started out, it actually turned out to be a great story and a guy ended up being super cool because it turns out that he used to be a ball boy for the Lakers in the early 90s. So he said, being at the Lakers practice facility, afterwards he would get so many jerseys from players that they'd take it off and sign it and give it to him. Wow. And this was the last piece that he had before he finally ended up selling them all. Wow. So I'm like, dude, this is a beautiful jersey. Do you happen to have any more? Like your store is amazing. Yeah. He's like, no, like this is the last one. I have a lot of d -box game yeah. one jersey, Byron Scott. Uh, I think he had um, guys like Antonio Harvey, some other like scrubs, but yeah. players I would love to have in the collection. Yeah. So this is a really cool piece as well. I, you know, I bought this for a hundred bucks. In one of my early original videos, I had a guy, I posted a video of just a lot of stuff I had, and this was over like 10 years ago. I had a guy that was a huge NBA jersey collector that lived in Portland, Oregon. He saw my collection, 
saw this jersey in the video, messaged me. He says, dude, what do you want for that jersey? Wow. He's like, I had the shorts for that jersey. And like, I've wow. been looking for the jersey. So he's like, I'll give you $2,200 wow. for the jersey. And obviously, it's still here, and I declined the offer. So wow. you know what, man? I would much rather you sell the pants. I have the heart, the piece that's actually <laughs> worth anything. So, and I said, why don't you sell me the shorts? He's like, no, I can't do that. I can't even do that. He's like, but if you ever decide to sell it, like, here's my number. Wow. I'll buy it. And he tried real hard. He offered $2,200. Wow. On top of that, three other game-worn Laker jerseys. Wow. He's like, I'll give you this player, this player, this player, and the 2200 wow. And I said, you know what? This is going to show how diehard of a fan and collector I am because I'm not going to sell it to you. It's part yeah. of my collection. Yeah, yeah. And he respected that. He's like, wow. I said, okay. You know, I gave you an offer that I don't, I don't think anybody else would refuse. Yeah. So right. he's like, I respect that. You're a diehard fan. But if you ever decide, then yeah. you're I have um, signed 8 by 10s that kind of surround the border. That's Magic Johnson's game-worn shoe from oh, 88. Wow. Um, just signed basketball. Just some other magazines that are signed. Uh, this was another piece I was trying to get Kobe to sign, never got him, so that piece is officially retired because yeah, I got everybody else on there. And all these autographs I got at the practice. Mm -hmm. So it was just a matter of bringing in, hoping that they would stop and sign. So that's another piece that's signed by Meta, but never got Kobe, unfortunately. So that's one of the pieces where I wish mm -hmm. I could have had to sign. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, just like a lot of signed posters, photos. Um, I'd say a good 90% of all the stuff you guys will be looking at are all autographed. Wow. So, being a Laker road dog, and a Laker road dog in definition for the small group of us is any Laker fan that travels outside the country to go support their team. Uh, so technically, you know, if, if we decide to go to a Laker game next season, you know, out of state, you're a road dog. I mean, anybody that puts in the effort that travels out of state to go see their there are Lakers in another arena, technically is considered a road dog, but we've kind of made a label for ourselves too, not only with our crazy get up, you know, we've, they've caught even, even um, Time Warner Cable and um, the Lakers stations even gathered us on TV a few times. It's kind of given us that exposure to where we've kind of gotten more well known because of our get ups and we go to so many Laker games now. It's like, dude, these guys really do go to a lot of Laker games. Um, I've been to 23 out of the 30 arenas. So I still have seven more to go. But every Hall of Famer is here. So you're looking at George Mike and there's Chick Hearn, uh, Kareem, Jamal Wilkes. That MPLS Laker basketball is signed by all six of the original Minneapolis Laker Hall of Famers wow. that have all passed away now. Wow. So that's signed by the original six Laker Hall of Famers. And again, going down the list, there's Magic and Bird on one ball, mm -hmm. Elgin Baylor, Magic, Worthy, Goodrich, uh, what I like about that Shannon Brown, not Shannon, sorry, Bill Sharman mm. signed basketball is it has both his Hall of Fame year as a player and Hall of Fame year as a coach, which is wow. kind of cool. Wow. So he's now passed away, so rest in peace to Bill Sharman as well. Wow. Now can you tell me about Kobe's? Now that's a number eight, I realize. This is a Kobe number eight, but I hate to tell you this, but there's no story behind it because it was given to me as a gift. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I got this as a birthday gift when I was 15. It was like one of the, like, one of like the first items that I ever had ever, ever gotten signed by Kobe. Wow. So it was one of the bigger gifts I think I'd ever gotten, even till this day. Because being a 15 year old, getting into autograph memorabilia and collecting, uh, getting that, I think it was by my parents probably. Wow. Um, till this day, it's still one of my favorite pieces, just signed by Kobe, because it brings me back to probably the very first Kobe autograph that I had in the collection. But yeah. no crazy story other than what I just told you behind it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do have Shaq and Kobe on one basketball as well. Uh, that one was um, uh, that one was actually given to me by a friend that had gotten both Shaq and Kobe at the time at the practice facility as well. So again, not much of a story behind that, but I thank the friend deeply that got that signed for me. So here is actually what I call the rings and glory area. So here I have some like commemorative um, trophies, mini. Tr um, Trophies and then the, the replica championship trophies. Um, it's obviously, obviously like a miniature size. I would actually love to have one of the actual size trophies if I can wow. find one at a good price. This is obviously like a replica, but miniature. But um, on top of that, I have all the Laker replica championship rings going from 1972 way in the back from the 80s and then the 2000 era. And then there's a Kobe comm uh, commemorative and then a George Mikan commemorative 
and both of those two rings were given to them a couple years after their retirement so it is really cool those are super hard to at least the george mike one is really hard to find you don't know a lot of people that have the commemorative george mike and you know that pretty much just has like the five year ch championship years that he won and yeah. obviously his number 99 yeah. Um, on top of that, which is a really cool piece, is Jerry Buss's actual business card autograph. Wow, okay. So that was given to me when I was at the Lakers Summer Pro League in Long Beach. Yeah. God, it had to have been like 2004, I want to say, maybe 2005, uh -huh. somewhere around that time frame. And he was coming out of the Lakers practice, or sorry, the, sorry, the uh, I almost said Lakers practice facility. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, trying, oh, trying, uh, pyramid. Yeah, the pyramid, the pyramid. Yeah, we're in, from in Long, Long Beach. Beach. Yes, yeah. so you guys know. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for correcting me. Yeah. So at the pyramid in Long Beach, so back at that time, that's when they used to have the summer pro league games there. Mm -hmm. He's coming out. I didn't have anything for him. I just wanted a picture with him. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, Jerry Buss, you know, can I get a picture with you? I'm like, I, you know, I wish I can have some to sign for you. But he's like, oh, hold on a second, you know. So he actually gives me his business card, and he had already had a pen on him, and he wow. signed that for me. So that was really, really cool. Until this day, that's always another great piece, yeah. you know, just and the story behind it as well that can share yeah. with other people. Yeah, and he so, gave up his number too. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll I have a couple actual business cards from wow. players. So that's Bill Sharman's uh, business card at one point, Stu Lance's business card, wow. and then Byron Scott's business card. Wow. So I do have those. That's Whether crazy. or not, I've never actually tried calling the number, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's you just, funny. like, send him an email or, or a text, like, yo, what's up, Scott? This is Sparrow. Can you, you know, can I come by the house today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I do have those, which are really cool. But these are kind of, again, it's like, kind of like the Rings and Glory era, just, like, mini trophies. This is, uh, is an actual um, cologne bottle wow. from the 1970s. Oh. With the image, it's supposed to be Jerry West, but, I mean, <laughs> but it is pretty cool. And then, you know, the commemorative jury bus yeah. um have so you yeah. ever used it the cologne uh when i bought it it was already empty so oh, you can wow. kind of smell like the scent in there but mm -hmm. uh it was already empty when i got it so yeah. um maybe they, when you look that. up here just more vintage you know yeah. um like po almost postcards uh size like index cards here these are really cool and i'm a huge fan of like old school stuff like this um there's a guy that ended up selling these to me so i didn't get any of these autographs personally mm -hmm. but i like the story behind these one because they're super rare and all of these are all one of one like right. nobody else in the world has these because this guy made all these individually and what he did was he did a lot of autographs through the mail and you know whatever players would sign it send it back he had like a, a collection of over like ten thousand pieces through all sports and the guy's finally liquidating his collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been hitting me up saying, like, hey, I'm finally selling this piece, this piece, this piece. And as he's like, what players are you interested in? Interested in? I said, just the Lakers. So I've been able to kind of gather some of these by uh, Whitey Scoop in the Minneapolis days. Wow. Uh, Frank Selvey picked up some of the, you know, Gail Goodrich and some of the Laker Hall of Famers. This Jerry West I got from him. I love this kind of stuff because it's unique, but nobody else has this. And that's yeah. what I love about, you know, my collection, being able to gather some of these pieces from, like, forgotten players, like even, like, Frank Selby, like I was telling you about. Yeah. You know, these are only a limited print of only 5,000, wow. having those wow. signed. They've now passed away. Uh, Hot Rod Hundley, he's now passed away. I got this signed when he was the play-by-play -play caller for the Utah Jazz. Wow. He obviously played for the Lakers in Minneapolis days, but... We got a hold of him and uh, sent that to the Utah Jazz organization, wow. and he signed that as well as a few other things. And signed it, sent it back, and then probably like, you know, eight years later, he passed away. So we we're wow. like, damn, dude, I'm glad we. And I, again, I, in reference, I say we because it's kind of something me and my dad do for a long time. But yeah. we're glad that we sent that out to him because this is kind of a really hard autograph to get. He didn't sign a whole lot. Right. So and then the Wheaties boxes goes back to the 87, 88 year, 09, 010. That Wheaties box is in the one in the middle from the 09 season, signed by everybody except for Derek Fisher and Kobe. Uh -huh. So we'll never be able to get Kobe, but Fisher is the last one that I need on that, and I can complete that. Uh, this Wheaties box is signed by the six on the cover, and on the back of that, there's actually a kind of like a group shot, like the middle one. Yeah. So I have guys like Kurt Rambis, uh, who else? Michael Thompson yeah. signed the back of it. So. Wow. Cool. All right, well, I think this is the interview. All right. Yeah.